All right. Why do we learn? What do we learn? And how do we apply what we learn in the real world? These are some of the questions I was trying to answer when I started this podcast. This is an audio and video show where I interview a diverse set of learners from the 21st century. In each episode of this show, I interview an individual who has a story to share about how they acquired a set of skills and knowledge in a creative and innovative way. In the process, I hope to uncover a new understanding of learning as conceptualized, imagined, and narrated by the guest in our show. Today's guest, uh, Mr. Jaikishan Sharma, is someone whose story I found really inspiring and uplifting. I first came across his story through uh, a talk I saw online uh, by a platform called Josh Talks, and I did tear up a little bit about him before we jump into this conversation. Jaikishan is a mindset coach, digital marketer, and successful entrepreneur. He's the founder of Sharma Tricks, Dream Chair Club, and J-Yug Australia. He moved to Australia in 2017 and completed a business degree from the University of Ballarat. Today, he is here to share his story. So, Jaikishan, thank you again for making time for this podcast. And uh, to start the podcast off, what I really want to ask you is, before we jump into your story of Australia and your journey there, I'd love to know a little bit about your childhood. You know, where did you grow up? What was Jai Kishan like as a child? What were you curious about? Maybe some things about your family and other hobbies. Of course, definitely. But thanks for having me here and giving me an opportunity to talk about my journey and also at the same time learn about you, what you do, because it's very important as a human to connect with other humans on this planet because I believe in, in that the life is all about stories, you know. And that's how we live through this journey. Uh, just to make a little correction that I moved to Australia in 2007, not in 17. So it was long time ago. Uh, talking about my childhood, Abhishek, uh, it was uh, not I talk about much. The reason why, because I was the naughtiest one uh, around the circle, in home, outside home. Even my dad, my mom was fed up of me. You know, I was constantly fighting in schools and uh, was not, um, I was average in my studies as well, you know. Uh, so when I finished my schooling here in Ahmedabad, so I was born in Delhi uh, and brought up in Ahmedabad in Gujarat and uh, did my schooling from here. And when finally I finished my uh, school, my father didn't want me to stay here in Ahmedabad because he knew that if I will stay, I'm going to be the bad one, you know, because I'm just want to, I will create the chaos. So he finally wanted me to leave Ahmedabad and go do study somewhere else. So the best place was, was Delhi because we have our family in Delhi, you know, my aunties, my uncles, uh, my mamas and everyone are in Delhi. So I chose to do my fine arts degree from Delhi and I did my four years bachelor's from there. And then finally, after finishing my bachelor, when I came back to Ahmedabad and wanted to do a business, because since my school, I was already, I, al I always had that entrepreneur mindset, you know, that what I can do for myself, which is my own, you know, which I can own up to and I can live up to that this is something what I have built because whenever we were doing some college fest or school fest or any competition or even even Gerba nights, you know, Navratri nights, I used to create, I used to have stalls, you know, food stalls, water stalls, any kind of activities I used to do because that's what I, I used to enjoy. So then I, when I came back from Delhi, finally, my father said that, what are your plans? I was like, I want to do business. You know, I want to get into uh, manufacturing, uh, into clothing and designing and all. Uh, because I did my four years degree in arts and I specialize in fashion designing. So I wanted to go into that, uh, that, that, that lane and that industry. Uh, so my father was like that, uh, sorry, but I have another plans for you. So I was surprised. I was like, now what? And he's like that. I have already spoken to the local, you know, migration agents and all these people, you know, and uh, you are going Australia. I was like, what? So he already planned everything. You know what? The only thing he didn't plan was what I want to study, you know, 
further. So he's like, you are going definitely. Everything is done. You know, I have already applied for the bank loan, student loan and everything. So I was like, okay, my mom was against it. My mom didn't like it. My mom didn't want it to send me anywhere because I was already away from home for four years. So finally, you cannot argue, you know, <laughs> in front of your dad. And then finally, after I think nine months, uh, I came back from Australia, De Delhi. In nine months, I was in Australia uh, to pursue my master's in international business. Wow. I did that for two years over there. Uh, and then I finished that and got into a corporate world for 10 years. Wow. But I'm I'm really curious about your first few years in Australia, yes. you know, because a lot of a lot of young people and a lot of people in their 30s and 40s are migrating to countries outside India, Canada, Australia, the US. And I'm curious about what were those first years like for you as a student, you know, from 2007 to maybe 2011? Yes. Because it's not as easy, you know, when you are an immigrant, people say everything's going to be green, everything's going to be nice. So what was your experience in that first four to five year period when you first moved to Australia? Yeah, so see, because I was young, I had uh, I had no focus. You know, I was I was just went there to study and come back, you know, because that's what my dad said that you don't have to settle there. You just need to go study and come back, you know, but you will get a new exposure. You will learn something new, you know. So that that that's the right that's the mindset I, I I went to Australia with you know, and then when I reached there I was doing my studies and at the same time because you have to survive you have to pay your your rent your food groceries and everything I started doing job and the job the only job I was able to do that I am a people person you know I love talking so I was like I want to get into some kind of a customer service or sales or marketing and then i had few friends who were already there who were my seniors from my school so i i i contacted them and they helped me to get a a, a sales and marketing job which was a door knocking job you know i used to door knock uh, from 5 30 to 7 38 o'clock in the evening uh, and that was selling gas and electricity connections to the residential properties. So I started from there. I used to knock 200, 150 to 200 knocks a day, doors a day. And I used to get one or two sales out of that. And uh, that was good because the commission was nice. So I was making good money. I was able to pay my rent, pay everything what I was you know, consuming over there rest of my, my tuition fees was already taken care by my student loan. So emotionally, yes, it was very difficult for me. The reason why is because just after a month, I moved to Australia, my father passed away. Uh, so I had to come back in, in one month. I had to take a defer from my university semester. I came back for all the, you know, rituals and funeral services and all. I came back, I finished that. I was here for three months. And then finally, all the family members were against of me going back to Australia. They were like, no, you stay here now. Who's going to take care of your mom and your sister? But my mom and my sister supported me. They were like, no, it was your dad's dream. Papa ne bola tha, you need to go. Finish and come back. You don't have to stay there, okay? And it's only a matter of two years, okay? We will take care of ourselves. And we have, you know, in India, there are thousands of people who can stand by you, beside you when you are in need. So they gave me a confidence. So I finally moved back to Australia, started my studies. And then again, back to that job uh, of door knocking and uh, started pursuing. And in 2010, I finished my master's degree uh, and then in 2011, February, I got my first corporate job. Uh, yes. So, and, you know, once you got that job, um, Jai Kishan, you know, like with regards to now, if you were speaking to someone that's just moving to Australia, you know, they've just moved there. What are some tips you'd give them to acclimatize to this new environment? You know, like in terms of, social tips, emotional tips, financial tips, 
So if you could just share some ideas for someone that's just moving there now. See, my my first advice, because the people, those who are going there, they, they are mostly youngs, you know. Uh, they are passed out from school or colleges and they are moving to overseas. I know they want to enjoy. I know they want, they have big dreams. But my advice to everyone is that stay connected to your roots, you know, first of all. Second of all, stay in touch with your family and your friends, those who are supporting you emotionally. That's the important part, okay? Because often when you talk about young generation, they detach themselves with these people, you know, but they don't realize that those are the ones who are going to stand by you when you will face adversity. Okay. And and we all know that we will all, we all going to face ups and downs in our life, you know. So from day one, if you can create a group, uh, you know, WhatsApp group of your five or three friends, you know, keep talking to them every single week, you know, your family members, if you have brothers and sisters, those who are very close to you, create a group with them, stay with them, connected with them, you know, because the 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 longer the gap, the lesser the emotional connection, you know. So it's better if you will stay connected. It will help you in the long run. You will not feel homesick. Second, network. As soon as you land there, do not sit and wait for opportunity. Start networking, you know. Wherever you go, even if you go to a 7-Eleven, speak to the guy who's serving you, you know. If you go to the petrol station, speak to that person, you know. Go to, if you are going to your uni, your college, speak to the professors and people over there. Because I have learned that your network is your net worth. You know, you never know who's going to uplift you or help you or give you an opportunity which can change your life into a 360 degree angle. And I will say that stay happy, you know, enjoy your life, but bring the balance, you know, because I know I have seen that if I will not talk about anyone else, I will talk about myself that I have made mistakes, you know. So one of the mistakes I, I, I regret was that why I didn't save those money, which I was, you know, I was just spending on random stuff, you know, like literally random stuff. So if I would have saved that money, I would have at least had some kind of a financial stability when I was in that dark phase for three and a half years, you know, yep. because I was, yep. when I got my cor corporate job, I was already on a, on a 85K Australian dollars package. You know, yep. if I would have saved those uh, money which I have wasted, uh, it would have been a difference. So strategically, I'm not saying that you should not enjoy, enjoy the life, but at the same time, have a future plan also, strategic plan that what you want to do with your money moving forward. Because that's what I teach people now that the goal needs to be that you need to retire in next 35 to 40 a, uh, when you are at 35 or 40 you do not want and we are in the 21st century nobody wants to work at 60 or 70 you know yeah. because we have a easy we have an we have access to tools right now which can literally change our life that's, that's what i will advise you know people that there's few things which which will really make difference when you will are moving or planning to move overseas those are great points jackishan you know that financial advice and that emotional advice you summarized it really well but you know after 2011 you are in this settled you know well-paying job yes and knowing your talk and when i was reading about your story you know around this time you know you you were you got married you know your family started in australia and you bought a house so but you had the high of that those things happening but then there were other incidents that happened around the same time in 2014 and 15. Yeah. So can you talk to me about this phase in your life? Because I believe how you applied your mindset in that phase is something we can all learn from. So can absolutely. you tell me about that phase of your of your life, Jackson? Yeah, no, absolutely. And and see, that's that's I believe that those three and a half years has given me a lot. Uh, in terms of perspective towards life 
and, and and understanding who really Jackie Chan is, you know, and why he was been given this life, you know, uh, and and I so it all started in 2015 because uh, in February 2015 I moved into my my first ever home in Australia my wife at the same time my wife was expecting so she left the job i was the only one who was working in august we was blessed with a baby girl wonderful girl and beautiful and we were looking for the adventure we were we were excited that what it's going to bring new house baby and everything is fine and then on the 11th of October, 2015, I got into my office and I was made redundant from my job because they were outsourcing a lot of things and they didn't want it, uh, me uh, for that position. So I was okay. I was okay. Fine. I was, I was like, I will find something, you know, end of the day. It's not a big deal. Uh, so I came home. I called my friend. I was like, Esa hua and I have uh, got redundancy. Uh, but I'm worried because it's October of this, uh, December, I got Christmas, I got, so there won't be much recruitment, you know, uh, because it's a holiday season. So I want to just check if you have, because he was in the same industry. So I was like, if you have something, uh, in your, you know, circle or in your office, please let me know whether it's part-time or full-time doesn't matter. I need to get something because I'm the only one who's making money. And Joby saving time, I've already put that into my deposit for the house. So wife was not working. So he said, why don't you come and see me next morning and uh, we'll have a coffee and breakfast and we'll talk about it. And I will, uh, I will, you know, also uh, show you around. And if there is something you can do, why not? So next morning on the 12th of October, 2015, I was on my way and boom, in the right in the middle um, uh, Melbourne city. Uh, I was just crossing the pedestrian car came boom. And I was next, next. I know that I was in the hospital bed. Uh, my wife was standing next to me with a baby girl, four or five doctors around me talking, you know, mumbling. And I don't know what they were talking about. And I was, I was trying to move and I was like, what's going on? You know, my below my tummy, there was not, no sensation, no movements. And then my one of the doctor came and said that, you know, uh, we have to take you to the operation theater because there is a severe injury. We have already spoken to your wife, okay, and she's okay with that. But uh, we want your consent, uh, and we want you to sign this, you know, document. So I couldn't like I was literally like I was just taking it all in. I couldn't things straight i couldn't you know i was not able to even say anything because there were, that moment was like Ye kya ho gaya? you know what what just happened with me and my wife was still crying uh, and uh, then the doctor the the neurosurgeon came and he said that there is a severe damage in the spinal cord and the nerve has been damaged and because of that you have lost the sensation uh, and the moment uh, but we do not want to give you a false hope before we take you for the surgery. There is only 5% chance, Jackie Shen, that you might will walk again ever in your life. And then the, the first thought came was like that, Yaar, kal job chala gaya. yesterday I lost my job, today this, you know, and now he's telling me that I'm not going to walk again. So that moment was like like the 9-11. I always refer that as a 9-11 terrorist, uh, terrorist attack, you know, where you where we all saw the World Trade Center falling down in pieces. I saw my life falling down in pieces because we as Asians, as coming back, coming from the Indian culture, we always been told that you are the protector, you are the provider to your family. And when the protector and provider has been put into this situation, the, the 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 mental um, you know stability the emotional stability the 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 emo everything shatters you know and that's exactly what happened with me they took me to the host uh, the operation theater they did all the surgery and all the surgery went for almost 10 hours uh, came out then 
I was in the intensive care for almost three and a half months, four months, and then another three and a half months in the in the rehab. Uh, but there was no, you know, there was no improvement. Literally, they were taking me to the physio. They were doing everything. Uh, they used to hoist me and they used to put me on the wheelchair, hoist me again, put me on the bed. Every day, same thing, you know, but no results. Then finally, they were like, yeah, we have to send you home. Uh, so they came, first they went home. And they did all the changes because for 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 the disability person, you know, who is on a wheelchair, they have to do a little bit of changes, like they have to build a ramp, they have to, you know, adjust the bathrooms and everything. So they did all the changes, then I went home. So Abhishek, until I was in hospital, I was fine, you know, because there were people around me. My wife was coming and seeing me every two week two days in a week. My uh my my i made friends like with nurse with neighbor the patients i had in my uh next door next bed but when i came home it's me my wife you know and i was like i didn't want it to share what i was going through and and that's what i understood later that she also didn't want it to share what she was going through because we didn't want it to put each other into a stress you know, mm. more stress than what we already been going through. So we literally for almost two two years around that time, we have not spoken then, uh, you know, khana khalo, you know, eat your food, pani chahiye, ya, normal stuff, you know, otherwise we have not discussed what we have gone through, what we were going through. And then finally, I asked a question to my wife in 2016, who is paying the mortgage? And I, I did ask that question before, but she ignored. And then finally, I used to get scared when somebody used to, you know, knock the door, ring the bell. Uh, and then I was like, nee, tujhe batana padega. you have to tell me who's paying the mortgage because I'm, I'm literally scared that one day the guy, the bank will come and they will say, they, you know, you need to leave the house because you haven't paid your uh, monthly installment, your mortgage from last six months, eight months, nine months. Uh, because it was first house, I didn't also knew the rules and regulation around that, you know, that you can apply for hardship and you can do that, all that stuff. So I didn't knew. But then my wife, me finally, when I forced her, she told me that it's mom who's sending money from India and she's borrowing from, you know, family. She's borrowing from, uh, from, you know, private lenders because in India you can borrow on interest, you know, like from private lenders and all. So she was borrowing and sending me money every month. And when she told me that broke me into pieces, I was like, no, man, I didn't want it that life. You know, I didn't want it. My mom, or my sister to go through because my sister was my sister is a social worker she was working with seva here in in ahmedabad and she was okay, only making 40 45000 a month you know she didn't had much salary so i was worried i was like if they are sending me money over here how they will going to survive you know because they have to pay the rent they have to no, sorry they have to pay the interest over there to the people they are borrowing from every month and now you know uh, we have to give this money back to them as well later on how all this is going to work out and that put me into a, a rabbit hole like a severe depression uh, I, I i was just getting nightmares you know i was just getting weird thoughts and from that it led to uh, to you know harming myself so i attempted once then second time then third time the first time my wife didn't knew but the second time she found out the third time she was like no you cannot do this you know she started crying she took me to the hospital again and then they put me into the uh, rehab uh, for mental health so i was there for another three 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 and a half months uh, i was on depression medication I was going through the sessions uh, every week. 
and because of those depression medications i was gaining weight i i went from like 109 107 kgs to 185 kgs because i was non mobilized and at this, and and on top of that i was eating this medication you know every single day uh, and now that also started emotionally draining me uh but then finally they after three and a half months they send me back home uh after seeing that you know i'm not doing such things i'm not harming myself or anyone else uh, around me because you might know it's it's different than 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 india if you talk about mental health and suicidal you know thoughts and everything in western countries they take very seriously because they are not only worried about you they are also worried about people around you you know because they don't want you to hurt someone else so i was there i came back home and then the turning point came when i was sitting on a wheelchair one day casually uh, going through my thoughts again and i saw my daughter playing toys she was already 10 11 months old by then uh, i looked at her she looked at me and i always refer this this moment uh, as a, as a shahrukh khan movie you know where shahrukh khan meets heroine and everything freeze and you know music starts playing so that moment was a magical moment for me because uh, she looked at me and you know i always believe that everything happens to us is the reason with why everything happens to us is the because we are connected with some things in our life Because birds do not fly, they ride the wind, and fish do not swim; they are carried. And that moment gave me two thoughts, Abhishek. And those two thoughts were, Jaykishan, either you accept the things as they are and live your life by default, then either you change the five percent chance what doctor told you on the day one on the hospital bed and change that into five hundred percent. and live your de- life by design because if if you look around a piece like everything except the nature in this world is built by a human kind isn't it yeah, yeah. so if ek nature ko chhod ke everything is built by human kind so if sure. you and me people like you and me can build such a wonderful things around us whether you talk about taj mahal whether you talk about such a wonderful roads whether you talk about elon musk building spacex is it really difficult for you and me to build our own life no it's not really not and from that one moment everything changed and I, from there i was a different person my perspective was like i want to find people like me those who have changed their life have they done started learning i started getting inspired by those stories and it was good like we are lucky that we have internet we are in the world of digital space that we have access to the information i started learning i started watching videos on youtube and then i started getting into free webinars free online master class you know just to understand that how i can better myself and then i came across a lot of mindfulness practice you know i came across how you can change your mindfulness uh formal practice to informal practice you know i started building that informal practice into my daily life whether i am brushing my teeth washing the dish taking a shower i want to be that in, in that mindfulness space not only when i am doing meditation but every moment even when i'm talking to you how i am grateful about it you know and from there i started doing lot of different exercise you know which has helped me which i also teach in my coaching as well because it has worked for me and then finally 2017 18 19 i was constantly focused i eliminated everything in around from around me and from my phone my 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 diary everywhere like i didn't i like i literally stopped talking to the people those who were not uplifting me you know yeah. i wanted only those people those who are giving me hopes and not talking negativity not 
putting any wrong thoughts and that helped me a lot and from there one day i woke up 2018 at the end of 18 i first saw my toe moving uh, on my leg and from there it all started and then 2019 finally i took my first step in front of the same neurosurgeon who told me that i have 5% chance <laughs> Oh, that's that's so inspirational i think she must have been shocked right when yes. she i mean yes she saw definitely it. she see the thing is that she was not shocked she was very happy because uh, during those time when i was learning and finding my true self i found one exercise which is done under water hmm. which is called hydro exercise and when i found that i went to her and and i asked her that i have found this uh, you know pe- people are talking about this and um, we do this in melbourne do we have such kind of a facility so she was shocked at that time that i found this you know uh, because they normally either the doctor will talk about it who knows okay or either nobody will find it you know because it was hardly accessible for others and she yeah. was like yes definitely i know a place where you can go and do it but i am glad that you have found this because i hope that this helps you so yeah. that helped me a lot also as i said that i i i i was doing some things this was one of the thing which i started doing hydro exercise so mm-hmm. on that day when i took my three steps in front of her she was not surprised but she was full of you know like like a she was full of gratitude and and she was full of joy that you know i i i i worked on myself otherwise she is she was that's what she said that jacky i have seen people giving up you know they just give up but you haven't that's great and and because you haven't given up you are here today that's amazing jackishan and i think this was the start of your second chapter yes. you know in a lot of ways and i I think it's amazing to see since 2018 2019 how you've not only transformed your life from a physical level in terms of recovering you know but you were able to start organizations that can really create impact in the real world whether it's Sharma Tricks or you know Dream Chair Club yeah. so maybe you can tell me about this second chapter you know why did you decide to become a mindset coach why digital marketing was your sort of avenue and i know you started like a perfume brand as well yes. in australia right <laughs> so maybe you can tell me about these entrepreneurial cool. ventures as well jack they definitely definitely so when i started walking abhishek i i because of my situation the only option i had to do something from home you know because because of my physical ability i was not able to go and look for a job so i had to do something from home so i started looking for some like data entry kind of a job or something which i can do from home you know like a, a customer service thing or something but i was not able to find that at all you know i found a one data entry job but that was not enough uh, for us to survive financially and then i was keep coming these ads on facebook you know talking about online business social media marketing and all that stuff i was like let's explore this what is this you know and uh, uh, i started exploring i started understanding it all started from affiliate marketing you know i i understood started selling you know affiliate products here and there started making little bit of money i started understanding more and see it all started with mastering what can i control you know and and first thing is that my boundaries i began setting clear boundaries respecting my limits and protecting my energy taking my thoughts and action i started paying attention to my thoughts choosing to act in way that align with my values you know and then setting goals that my goal was only to make 2200 dollars which was my mortgage exactly mm-hmm. 2200 australian dollars that's what i wanted to earn through that affiliate marketing i was doing mm-hmm. i was like agar itna ban jayega na that's it that's what i want to earn every month 
so I can at least take care of that $2,200 and ask my mom to stop sending me money, whatever she's sending us. How I speak to myself, it's very important. You know, self-talk, self-talk became my mantra. Literally empowers me to overcome challenges in my life. What I give my energy to. Because wherever the energy glows, wherever the energy glows, everything flows. To channel my energy into things that truly matters in my life. How I can, uh, you know, handle challenges. I started oh. appreciating the falls because I changed my expectations into appreciations. As you see, people are often expecting, expecting from partners, from parents, from government, from neighbors, from society. They are constantly in an expectation mode. Yeah. But they don't realize that it's not about expectation. It's about appreciation that, okay, I have a house. I, had a, I have a wonderful mother who has gone beyond. A wonderful wife who was taking me to the shower, changing my clothes, changing my shit. Yeah. You know, I started appreciating my, my, my sister who was giving me strength. And appreciating that I still have a roof. That changed my life and that's how I went from making $500, $600 in affiliate marketing to $900 to 2000 to 3000 to 4000 to 5000 a month from there i was like i don't because i i was enjoying that but at the same time somewhere i was like i don't want to do only this i want to change people's life you know and i want to show what i have done so if that can help someone in their own life and from there i started coaching people you know literally i started reaching out to people talking to them then i was in a webinar one day and it was tony robbins webinar and webinars they do a breakout room so yeah. in a breakout room you have five six people with you they talk you know they share what they do and all so i was sharing my story i was sharing who i am you know what happened why i am here and what i want to achieve and uh, there was a, someone who was paying attention to my, my, my share, you know. And then after two weeks, I got an email from someone that, hey, we um, uh, saw you on this webinar a few weeks back and we want to connect with you because your story is amazing and we think that it needs to be, uh, you know, shared. It needs to be put out there in, in for other people to inspire them. And then I ignored me. It's a spam, you know. Because at that time, I didn't have any, any thoughts of, you know, sharing with someone else, you know, like personally or putting out there. It was not vision. And yeah. then three, three, I think three and a half weeks later, she emailed again. And in, now in that email, she mentioned one of my friend, Chloe. And she said that uh, we have, uh, you know, I have spoken to Chloe and she has given me your contact details. And uh, we really want to connect uh, if you want, if you are interested. So I was like, if she has, because she mentioned Chloe, so I spoke to Chloe and then Chloe's like, yes, I have given your details without asking you. Uh, but I, I knew that you will say no. That's why I just did it. Uh, and uh, I was like, okay, fine. And I got onto the Zoom with that lady. And then I found out that she is a editor in Forbes. Mm -hmm. And from there, everything changed, you know, from there, uh, she put me on the Forbes magazine. Uh, and that's where the name was given from wheelchair to dream chair. Um, mm -hmm. and, and then I was bombarded with DMs and with messages on Instagram, on Facebook. And then uh, that happened. And then the next one was Elon Musk. And from there, like it, it changed everything. When I was in the same magazine with Elon Musk, uh, from there, I was like, now it's time to change this into, now it's time to monetize, you know, yeah. now it's yeah. the right time to monetize. And from there, I monetized my coaching from free to paid uh, in 2021. 
एंड फिर वो पूरा लाइक आई वेंट फ्रॉम यू नो कोचिंग इंडिविजुअल्स विच आई स्टील डू कोचिंग ग्रुप्स and then started getting into stages speaking around the world so far i have spoken in dubai in singapore in malaysia in melbourne obviously and uh, in india last year i am so grateful that last year i was invited at a g20 summit in 2023 wow. as a speaker here right here in gujarat university uh, so that was the and just after that just jo stock hua uh, because that's how they found out about me फिर जो स्टॉक हुआ बेटर इंडिया हुआ सो दिसड फॉलोइंग बिकॉज आई आई स्टार्टेड पुटिंग आउट दैट राइट एनर्जी यू नो आउट इन द यूनिवर्स एंड आई थिंक यूनिवर्स रिवॉर्ड एक्शन नॉट थॉट्स सो इफ यू पुट थिंग्स इन मोशन द यूनिवर्स विल स्टार्ट गिविंग यू मोर अपॉर्चुनिटी स्टार्ट थ्रोइंग यू मोर थिंग्स you know which really really meant for you in this life so that's how i have built the business uh, coming to the question about the perfume thing it's because of my very 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 good friend uh, he's a friend from day one when i landed in australia uh, he is passionate about uh, perfumes uh, he is very into fragrances and all and then my wife because जब मैं आई वॉज गोइंग थ्रू दैट बैड फेस अभिषेक माई वाइफ स्टार्टेड डूइंग ऑल्टरेशन फ्रॉम होम क्लोथ ऑल्टरेशन सो शी कैन मेक लिटल बिट ऑफ मनी यू नो टू फॉर द ग्रोसरीज एंड ऑल सो वो दैट बिजनेस स्टार्टेड लिटल यू नो ग्रोइंग वेन आई अंडरस्टूड द सोशल मीडिया मार्केटिंग आई स्टार्टेड हेल्पिंग हर आई क्रिएटेड द फेसबुक पेज आई स्टार्टेड मार्केटिंग फॉर हर सो शी डीड दैट बिजनेस फॉर ऑलमोस्ट टेन ईयर्स and uh, two like one and half years ago she has shut that down and now she is focusing on this fragrance so it's a joint venture of me and my friend uh, so okay. he is taking care of all the uh, manufacturing and and everything supply and everything my wife take care of of uh, of making the perfumes making the candles and making everything uh home sprays and everything i take care of the marketing and all for them that's that's amazing you know and i think the most powerful thing in your story jackishan is that you were able to take a challenging situation and you were able to find opportunity in that yeah. i think that is such an important lesson to learn from your journey but i you know i've read so many of your articles and i've seen so many of your videos jackishan and i see how fondly you speak about the women in your life you yeah. know your mother your sister your wife and your daughter so can you tell me like one lesson you've learned from each one of them that you think has shown you you know what it means to really be human you know because yeah. i when i hear your story i think about how hard it must have been for your mother yes. when she was you know without any source of income you know getting all that money for your wife to unconditionally support you you know your daughter being so young and your sister also going So, what is one lesson you've learned from each one of them that you'd like to share with us today? Uh, see, if I talk about my mom, uh, my mom has always taught me how to be patient in life. You, you need to, you just need to put your effort and and your energy into the right thing, right thing, and wait for that moment. You know, and from day one, from that decision of making. i should go for operation in 2015 that was also came from my mom she is like just believe in yourself and be patient enough that something good will happen and that's what the life is she always take that bad good bad good that's how the life goes if you if you can be patient enough the good will come if you will not be you will not be able to enjoy the good enjoy the good you need to pass through this phase of your life and that's and when whenever she talks about that that's what i think that we as a human mostly on people are in on, on this planet right now are just living like a passenger just passing through but they don't realize that we are the creator of our life we are the author 
we need to write our own story and that's exactly what i want to do with my own life still i am like i am not 100% fit i am not i am still on medication like i have a chronic pain i go through a lot of pain uh, in my back in my feet uh, if i push myself too much so i cannot walk for long i cannot sit for long you know i like, cannot stand for long but i make sure that it should not stop me from doing what i really enjoy what i do i take it slow i plan i plan my travels i plan my days i plan my my schedule accordingly that i'm not taking too much but i am still achieving what i really want to achieve talk about my sister she always talks about awareness to be aware if you are not aware how will you going to plan your actions she always whenever we talk you know me and my sister and and thankfully uh, fortunately that my sister my mom now lives with me in, in melbourne you know yeah. I, i i was able to make that possible in 2022 see whenever we talk we talk about awareness what's going around in the world you know because she comes from that community centric mindset from social work you know yeah. she she is also a people person so she all we always talk about awareness you know and talking about my wife persistence when we came back from that three steps from the hospital abhishek we cried for almost 2 hours for those 2 hours we didn't say a word we were literally sitting and we were just crying and looking at each other we were just taking out all that burden and the emotion we have built in in ourselves for those 2 3 and 1/2 years of our life times you do not need words it's exactly what i bring into my clients also and that's why i enjoy doing one on one coaching because when i talk to my clients in in close room session where he or she can share genuinely and i can listen authentically it's how human open up it's exactly what this you and i am i am so grateful that i am surrounded by such a wonderful woman in my life whether it's my mom my sister my my wife and now my daughter you know yeah. it's really really great <laughs> Yeah, and you know you've been coaching so many people. For the listeners tuning in, I will be linking Jack Kishan's websites yeah. in the show notes. It's very hard to summarize his journey in one hour, yeah. but please do follow up on his work on social media and on the websites linked below. For the last question, Jack Kishan, you know what I want to ask you is: you've mentored so many people. You've done so many group session, you know, group coaching sessions. You know, can you tell me? without naming the person you know maybe some stories of people you saw that applied some of your principles and were able to transform their lives you know in in similar ways uh, using your you know mindset approach of course definitely uh <clears throat> there are a lot of people but i will talk about the person uh which i always mention the reason why because that was the guy from us who reached out to me after my forbes article and whom i coached for absolutely free at that time uh, he made into an accident and and he like we both resonated with each other reason why is because his mom was taking care of him just like my mom did and he had no one he made into an accident and he was totally bedridden okay so he i was at least on a wheelchair but he is on a bed 24 by 7 and he read my article and and he read about me and he reached out uh, to me on on instagram and that's how we started talking we started connecting and and see there is there is an opportunity cost to everything in life okay now you need to decide what you really want to give up it's the question only you can answer i really want like if i talk about myself i made a choice to give up that default life expecting accepting that i would sit on that wheelchair no i didn't want it that life you know 
I made a choice that, okay, I will go out, I will learn, I will find things, I will make opportunities more for myself, I will network, I will connect with people, those who can put me into the right place at right time, which can create opportunity for me. That's how I, I connected with that guy. We started working together. I started doing a lot of um, um, uh, beliefs, uh, eliminating belief exercise with him, you know, which helped me, helped him to at least get out of that negative mindset so he can think strategically. started doing uh, meditation together on every session. That's how we started our calls every time with the meditation, which, which he still continues till date. Because he was going through such things, he was, you know, getting away from emotionally from the mother. And I didn't want it that, you know. And and after all the all the all the exercise and all the session, there was a subtle shift occurred in his in his well being, in his emo- emotional well being. That he started connecting with the mother. He started talking with the mother. He started sharing with the mother, and he started feeling good. Of the day, we need to understand we are hu- social humans. You know, it doesn't matter how far we go with this technology. You mm. will always need someone next to you to talk. Always. There is a simple example. If you go through any kind of a mental health problem, <laughs> what is the first thing doctors suggest you to do? Be around people, like more people. No, or... they put you to the psychiatrist. Yeah. Correct? And yeah. what does the psychiatrist does? Talks to you. Like exactly about... right. Yeah. That's what psychiatrist does. Yep. He asks you question. He will put take you deep down into your memories, and he will connect you to your core. But if you talk to your people around you, whom you really love, if you share, you will never go into that phase where you have to go and talk to the psychiatrist. That's true. Yeah, you know, we can. I think it's like that self talk, and you know, exactly. checking in with yourself and. And also removing that taboo around mental health, right? Yeah. Which I think, especially being from the Asian community, it's very hard to openly yeah. speak I about, know. you know, some of these topics. And, you know, I think you've shown so much vulnerability. And I, I feel like what you touched on, on especially this idea of masculinity for, you know, young Indian Asian men or people from, the, from anywhere. I think, yeah. you know, men in general feel like being vulnerable, being open, being honest is something you can't do, but you were able to do that in a lot of ways, right? Yeah. For, you know, Zekishan, if someone wants to reach out to you and work with you, you know, what are some ways they can connect with you and work with you? Like, what, what would you recommend? Very accessible on Instagram DMs, okay? Uh, there is no single DM which I have not replied so far, you know, since day one. I always reply, even if it's, if it's a spam. <laughs> so uh, uh, I'm very e- easy approachable uh, so you can DM me on Instagram you can email me on info at dreamchairclub.com or you can book a call um, go on a website uh, dreamchairclub.com and book a call with me you know uh, it's a small 15 minutes discovery call if you need help uh, we can connect, we can see, uh, you know, if we can work together. Uh, yes, so it's very easy to reach out to me uh, on Instagram, on website or email. Anyway. Wonderful. And with that positive note, we conclude this episode of Learning Stories. You know, we've learned so much from Jack Kishan and, you know, I want the listeners to tune in. Uh, the reason I do this podcast is because there are so many amazing stories out in this world and you know, we just have to look out there and see how we can learn from these stories. And I think Jay Kishan's story is one such story we can learn so much from. Please do follow the show notes for Jay Kishan's website. You can learn about Dream Chair Club, Sharma Tricks, and his entrepreneurial and marketing journey by following these notes. Until next time, this is Abhishek Shetty and the Tisha Tuber signing off on this episode of Learning Stories.